Namaste, Namaskar, Vanakam, Sastri Kal, and welcome back to Grow with the Jan family. I'm Anjali. And today we're going to be reacting to India's first write a reply from Imran Khan's UN speech. So we just did Imran Khan's speech and Modi's speech kind of together. And, um, you know, so we kind of know what he said. And this is India's replying to it. And, you know, watching Imran speak, it was almost like venom. It was so negative and harsh. harsh. And it actually made me get angry inside as I watched tense. it. And tense. And, like, it just, he came with complaints. He he, and he just went on a, a rampage and just not what you need from a leader, not what Pakistan needs for their country right now. Um, you know, we want good things for everybody, for India, for Pakistan. We want good things, prosperity and economy and growth and development and, you know, human Everybody is human. Everybody needs good things. So we're going to listen to this reply from after his speech to see what they said. And um, let's start it up. Yes. And I'll give the floor to India for your successful right of reply. India, you have the floor. Mr. President, I take the floor to exercise India's right of reply to the statement made by the Prime Minister of Pakistan. Every word spoken from the podium of this August assembly, it is believed, carries the weight of history. Unfortunately, what we heard today from Prime Minister Imran Khan of Pakistan was a callous portrayal of the world in binary terms. Us versus them, rich versus poor, north versus south, developed versus developing, Muslims versus others. A script that fosters yeah. divisiveness at the United Nations, attempts to sharpen differences and stir up hatred are, simply put, hate speech. Rarely has the General yeah. Assembly witnessed really such misuse, rather abuse, of an opportunity to reflect. Words matter in diplomacy. The invocation of mm -hmm. phrases such as pogrom, bloodbath, racial superiority, pick up the gun, and fight to the end reflect a medieval mindset mm -hmm. and not a 21st century vision. Prime Minister Imran Khan's threat exactly. of unleashing nuclear devastation qualifies as brinksmanship, not statesmanship. Even coming from the leader of a country that has monopolized the entire value chain of the industry of terrorism, Prime Minister Khan's justification of terrorism was brazen and incendiary. For someone who was once a cricketer and believed in the gentleman, gentleman's game, today's speech bordered on crudeness of a variety reminiscent of the guns of Dara Adam Khel. Mr. President, now that Prime Minister Imran Khan has invited UN observers to Pakistan to verify that there are no militant organizations in Pakistan, the world will hold him to that promise. Here are a few questions yes, that do. Pakistan please can do. respond to as a precursor to the proposed verification. Can Pakistan confirm the fact mm -hmm. that it is home to 130 UN-designated terrorists and 25 terrorist entities listed by the UN yeah. as of today? Will Pakistan acknowledge that it is the only government in the world that provides pension to an individual listed by the UN in the Al-Qaeda and Daesh sanctions list? Can Pakistan explain why, yeah, here in New York, its premier well, bank, the Habib yeah, Bank, exactly. had to shut shop after it was fined millions of dollars over terror financing? Will Pakistan deny 
that the Financial Action That's Task crazy. Force yeah. has put the country on notice for its violations of more than 20 of the 27 key parameters. And finally, would Prime Minister Khan deny to the city of New York that he was an open defender of Osama bin Laden? Mr. President, having mainstreamed terrorism That's and hate speech, found, right? Pakistan yes, yeah. is trying to play its wild card as the newfound champion of human rights. This is a country that has shrunk the size of its minority community from 23% in 1947 to 3% today, and has subjected Christians, Sikhs, yeah, Ahmadiyas, Hindus, Shias, Pashtuns, Sindhis, yeah. and Balochis to draconian blasphemy laws, systemic persecution, and blatant abuse and forced conversions. Their newfound fascination for preaching human yeah, rights is akin go. to trophy hunting of the endangered mountain goat, the Markhor. Pogroms, Prime Minister Imran Khan Niazi, are not a phenomenon of today's vibrant democracies. We would request you to refresh your rather sketchy understanding of history. Do not forget the gruesome genocide perpetrated by Pakistan yes. against its own people in 1971, and the role played by Lieutenant General A.A.K. Niazi. A sordid fact that the Honorable Prime Minister of Bangladesh reminded this assembly about earlier this afternoon. Mr. President, Pakistan's virulent reaction to the removal of an outdated and temporary provision that was hindering development and integration of the Indian state of Jammu and Kashmir stems from the fact that those who thrive on conflict never welcome the ray of peace. While Pakistan has ventured to upstream terrorism yeah. and downstream hate right speech there, yeah. India is going ahead with mainstreaming development in Jammu and Kashmir. The mainstreaming of Jammu and Kashmir, as well as Ladakh, in India's thriving and vibrant democracy with a millennia-old heritage of diversity, pluralism, and tolerance is well and truly underway. Irreversibly so. Yay. The citizens of India She's do amazing. not need anyone else to speak on their behalf, least of all those who have built an industry of terrorism from the ideology of hate. I thank you, Mr. President. I thank the Government oh of India for her remarks. She really gave it to Imran Khan, like facts and... She really stated those facts. Yeah, she stated her facts. She, you know, was very firm in what she said about his speech and how it was pretty much filled with hate and blaming others and starting terror. And, you know, talked about how India is doing good things for Jammu and Kashmir, talked about, you know, all the good things about India, like just, it was a, a I want to say a good comeback, right? Is that what yeah. you call it? Um, just amazing. This, his, Imran Khan's speech really just, you know, was very upsetting. Pakistan could be such a great country with ideas similar to like India in the fact that they, you know, welcome diversity, working on jobs, working on economy, doing good things for the world. You know, he talked about planting those million, million trees in a year and he talked about doing more for the world, for global warming. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, started going off that he didn't have enough money. I just think, and I said before, like, bring some ideas to the table. They'll give trade. You money. And, yeah, India's going with trade ideas, with new ideas, not only for their own country, but to help others around the world. Yeah. Come with ideas. And then say, in order to do this, we need some support. We need some help. We need some funding. We need some military people. Yeah. Um, you know, you can't just hold your hand out and then blame everybody else and then, then start talking about picking up guns. Yeah, and then 
like give the money to terrorists so they can have stuff like why that's not helping your country that's not doing any good for anybody what is this gaining the last 70 years fighting with india over jerman kashmir has done to make pakistan better what has it done you know you the focus should be getting people jobs bringing the economy better you know doing great global warming and planting trees yeah. that's a fabulous idea you know there's a lot of good things that you can bring to the table you know she talked about the the people that the the small amount of diversity that Pakistan had went from 23% to 3%. To 3%. Where like did those people go? So were they killed? Were they converted? Did they leave the country? What happened? Why? Whereas in India, the the Muslim population has doubled or more, you know, so you have to kind of come into the light and do the good things and and this speech for him was not helping Pakistan at all. No. This is not good leadership at all. So what we want for the world, what we want for Pakistan, what we want for India, peace is always the answer. Gandhi's birthday is coming up. We're so excited. Yes. Peace is the answer and prosperity for your countrymen, for your country. You know, do good things because anger and hate only brings more anger and hate. And is mm-hmm. that what you want your children and your grandchildren to to die, you know, poor and hateful? Like, that's just kind of what I felt like he was yeah. envenoming out. So um, prosperity and good things for all countrymen. I hope you guys like this. And if you like this video, don't forget to click that like button down below because the more you like, the more YouTube shares our videos. And don't forget to subscribe and join our wonderful family. And we'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Bye.